Hello, everybody. It's Stefan from the IMU team. I've got the great, great pleasure to introduce Andy Chaplin uh, today, who's going to do a session on uh, foreign language teaching with Moodle. He's a language teacher, otherwise he wouldn't do this presentation, but he's also a curry lover and someone who's never satisfied. So he's always working on perfectioning his Moodle and other skills. I've just seen him work on a 3D printer he's building himself. Um, he teaches both international business leaders and inner city comprehensive kids. And what makes him so likable is that he thinks both are equally important. So I think we've got a lot to learn from you and I'm gonna hand it over to you. Take it away, Andy. Okay, thanks very much for that, Stefan. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me on such a, a nice, sunny um, afternoon, on a Saturday afternoon. Um, well, it's certainly sunny and wonderful weather here in Germany. I hope it's uh, just as good where you are. Um, the reason I uh, chose to talk about this subject was that um, I think everybody who teaches on and um, also on Moodle, people say, yeah, my subject's a bit different. Um, uh, we have these discussions in the staff room very often um, with people, uh, with other teachers. Uh, yeah, but you can't do that in maths. Yeah, and you can't do that in teaching English as a foreign language. And, and this sort of problem crops up quite a lot. Um, and coupled to that is that um, when you look at Moodle, um, you very often find that uh, a lot of the courses look the same when you open them up. Um, it's rather, um, although um, Moodle is, yeah, the, the M is for modular, not for mandatory, um, and you can pick and choose so many things um, to fit into your course, um, but there seems to be a sort of um, hidden pressure to do it much the same way that everybody else does, because everybody else can't be wrong. Um, and so you end up with these courses which often look rather similar. And certainly you can see courses that, um, um, say when you see screenshots, uh, I can look at that and say, oh, uh, that looks pretty much like Moodle 1.9 to me. Um, and oh yeah, that's sort of in the middle twos somewhere. Um, and it doesn't really matter what the course is, they all tend to look a little bit the same. Um, and that's something which I've always had a problem with um, in all things in life. And, and so it, I spent a lot of time um, tinkering with Moodle and trying to find ways of um, making it look a bit less moodly. Um, now, I'm not doing that really um, just for the sake of it. Um, it's, it's not just because I can. Um, but I, I, I've been influenced a lot by uh, some presentations that I've seen, um, particularly by Joyce Seitzinger, talking about learner experience. And um, so I started um, looking at different things that were available. And frankly, getting involved in Moodle.org was one of the most important things I did, because in reading of other people's problems and then beginning to help people with their problems in the areas that I knew, I found all these plugins. And when I saw um, people say, oh, well, you should try that. I thought, oh, I never knew that existed. Um, and uh, so I started checking the things out myself. Um, the problem with plugins is uh, what you see on the screen now, it, you can get into plugin hell fairly quickly. Um, there are so many plugins um, and some of them are good, some of them are brilliant, and some of them are very, very particular in how they work. Um, comes down to the maintenance very often. Um, we just had a keynote from Justin Hunt who maintains Poodle and Generico and Read Aloud and the guy is um, he's just fantastic. You, you have a problem or an issue with one of his plugins and he's fixed it an hour later and done an update. Um, he, he's absolutely sensational. Obviously, other people haven't necessarily got that um, time or uh, inclination to work like that. And so um, choosing plugins can be a bit of a hit and miss affair. Um, but it's certainly one of the ways that um, you can start to tailor Moodle. Um, with languages, um, I, th I think 
language teachers and um, language course designers. Um, I, I work with a number of publishers um, and, and they seem to have this rather linear approach. Yeah, um, they talk about progression and you start at unit one and you end at unit 12 and you've progressed from this level of competence to that level of competence. And I found this wonderful picture of the longest water bridge in the world, um, somewhere in the southern states of America. Um, and what quite impressed me was this sort of mist and low lying cloud um, hanging around the bridge. Um, yes, it, it, there is a progression, um, but um, in language teaching, there are so many things that happen in the language lesson that you need to look at and you need to address that um, this way ahead is not quite as clear cut as it might be in some subjects. Um, here I've got a rather, um, uh, let me see, I, uh, Dave, have you, uh, I don't know where you're from, um, but um, uh, are you from the UK? US, okay. I can't really expect you to know this then. Um, this is um, a roundabout in Swindon, um, is uh, known to most people in Britain as the magic roundabout. Um, a, a truly spectacular piece of urban design, um, which apparently makes life easier for the motorist. Um, it's it's it's. I, there's a couple of them in the UK. There's one in Hemel Hempstead, which I uh, did have to drive through fairly often. But the first time I saw this was about four o'clock on a summer's morning when I was on my way through Swindon to somewhere, um, and. I was very pleased it was four o'clock in the morning and it was daylight and there was almost no traffic because it, it, it's a scary sort of thing to have to con be confronted with. Um, what I found very um, appropriate here is that um, it's very much like the the language experience. Um, as a language teacher, you walk in and you have um, a, a target for that lesson of introducing relative clauses maybe or something like that and then a student says something in the first two minutes which needs dealing with um, you can't say remember that and we'll discuss that in, it's on our program for three weeks time um, language has to be dealt with fairly immediately um, and so you end up in um, a situation where maybe your um, plan has to be adapted quite dramatically um, or you have to throw the plan out of the window. You have to make a decision, a pedagogical, a pedagogical decision, whether the question merits the diversion or whether you are going to come back to it later. But more often than not, you need to be able to deal with it quite quickly. Um, and Moodle courses um, don't necessarily cope with that very well in the given structure that most people accept. Um, there's a lot of talk about the scroll of death on Moodle and it's got a lot better um, from earlier versions. Um, the, um, I'm just having a quick look. <laughs> okay, you know. Yeah, um, it, it is an amazing thing. I, I do say if you're going to Swindon or Hemel Hempstead in the UK, you have to check it out. And I also know that Germans' abhorrence of roundabouts uh, makes it particularly intimidating for them. Um, the, um, but going back to the, the scroll of death, um, th this is actually a screenshot of a course that I produced um, a few years ago. Um, and it was basically teaching businessmen um, about writing emails or correspondence. And this was the email section. And this is just a tiny part of it. It went on for pages and pages. Um, and in a book, yes, it would be broken up into uh, a certain chunk that we now that we call a page. Um, in Moodle, you can break it up into labels, but ultimately it's a long line. Um, and certainly what I um, was introduced by, to by um, Joy Seitzinger um, was that this learner experience, um, that, that the learner doesn't do it like that. Um, 
I knew that because of my roundabout. Uh, when you're doing face-to-face -face teaching, you're confronted with this all the time. But in online teaching, you're not. You, you aren't sitting watching the learner all the time. Um, and so that's something that you have to think about. Yeah, when they're sitting in front of a computer screen, they don't do it any different to um, when they're sitting in a classroom in many respects, except they haven't got you there automatically to guide them in the right direction. And so offering choices becomes much more important. Um, and I made a sort of um, a personal rule that I wanted each module or each section in a uh, course not to be more than two pages or two scrolls um, so that where possible it's on one single page um, if not at the most a two-page scroll um, which I found um, made me think a lot about putting things together in a more useful way for the learner that they can look and see immediately um, where the options are, where the help is, where the alternatives are. Um, what that does is it, it gives up some of the teacher control, um, which, um, to be honest, I found very difficult at the beginning. This idea that I'm the expert, um, uh, that there's a lot of, uh, when you do teacher training, there's a lot of uh, examples where they say you're the star of the show. Yeah, you're the expert. Um, you're the person who always has the answers, even if the answer is go and look it up in that book. Um, you have this sort of controlling and central element. Um, in online learning, you think at first that you can do the same. Um, what I believed was that I could create a course that was so logically built that every learner would follow it. Um, and it took me quite a long time to discover really that they didn't. Um, they got their results. But when I started asking about um, satisfaction with the course, I found that, yes, it was good. It was a bit boring. And I was rather concerned because I thought the material was, I thought, pretty good. Um, I spent a lot of time working on the material. Um, and then I, I really did some intense questioning with some of my um, business customers and found that, yes, the, the material was good, but uh, we had to look for it or it wasn't where we expected it to be. And so this learner choice element becomes much more important. Um, and that was something that um, I wasn't really aware of. And I started looking at tools within Moodle that would allow me to um, give the student uh, these options um, this is, um, I think, one of my most popular slides. Uh, I use the slide quite often because I talk about the KISS principle quite a lot. And it's amazing how many people remember these lips, um, which um, maybe they don't remember much about what I was talking about, but they do remember these lips. Uh, it's an amazing photograph. Um, but the KISS principle um, is something that a lot of people um, aspire to. And, and what I think it is always good to remember is more um, the swan. Yeah, um, the swan is you know, this wonderful, serene, simple movement, but under the water, there's an awful lot going on. And to create this short and simple approach requires an awful lot of effort from the teacher um, in the planning stage. Um, so that brought me to um, everybody likes to use these 2.0s and 4.0s, and I think it's industry 4.0 now. Um, but progression 2.0 um, is taking account of that. Um, the, the progression is not that bridge uh, going straight ahead, um, that it's your plateful of spaghetti with um, lots of different starting points, lots of different ending points, and an endless ways of getting to those. Um, and trying to adapt this rather linear structure of Moodle uh, to that, or to at least allow the options of choice and different routes through the course um, is something that uh, I've been working out an awful lot. Um, 
this is of course one of the ways you can do it uh pop up hell uh this uh sort of thing used to be a massive problem since people have started using pop-up blockers um it means that the we don't get confronted with this as often as uh, was the case. But yes, providing a lot of options on one page is one thing, but it's got to be also be done in a logical way and not just cramming the page full of answers. And that's where the, the planning aspect comes into it. Um, and so uh, what we're going to have a look at now is um, a two of the courses which I run. Um, I've taken on the left of the screen here. Um, this is uh, my scroll of death email course. Uh, and certainly one of the first things that uh, I found that was really useful when I moved, uh, when I went on to uh, Moodle.org um, was the grid format. And uh, it seems to be the sort of um, hidden subject of iMoot this time. I've been in at least um, a dozen presentations where um, the grid format has been uh, 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 referred to. Uh, it is something that is absolutely excellent. It, it changes the whole feel of the course in one click. Um, and Gareth uh, Barnard, who is the uh, maintainer of the uh, plug-in or of the format um, does a great job at keeping it current and providing the bits and pieces that people suggest as improvements. Um, and my plea would definitely be for uh, the grid format to be a part of the core Moodle. Um, so again, that gets rid of a front page on the course, which can go on quite a long time. Here we've got um, yeah, the six modules of the course, um, all easy to see. And I'm not necessarily constricting the user to go in one particular route through this course. Um, and then a page, again, uh, while um, mobile learning is an increasing topic, at the moment, um, my personal view is, and certainly when I discuss this with my customers, is that um, the learning aspect of Moodle, the exercises and the activities are more often than not and um, overwhelmingly done on a computer or a laptop. Um, maybe they're using the mobile app for forums and reading um, short pieces of information. Um, but, but the more um, hardcore learning is taking place still on a, a laptop or a desktop. And so for that reason, I looked at keeping the courses in a format using the widescreen um, that uh, most monitors have nowadays um, and uh, making the best use of um, screen real estate. So let's have a look at this. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn off my uh, turn off my webcam and do the screen sharing thing, which may take a moment to come up. Um, but if you'll just bear with me. So. Okay, so that looks like it's coming up now. Yeah, Joshua, um, I, I think you're right about that with the, the, the mobile aspect. Um, it's certainly becoming um, much more important. Um, the, the question I... I think is whether they can have the same quality experience. Um, certainly in, on some tablets, I think that's possible. Um, but ultimately, um, despite uh, the, the fantastic work that's being done on um, the, the mobile courses, um, I do wonder if it's really a good place uh, to be doing um, um, realistic learning. 
okay, yeah, yeah. If they haven't got another choice, then um, that's certainly a, a different reason, yeah. Okay, um, let me see. What, what should we look at first? Okay, this is um, a course page uh, which is for um, a secondary school. Um, they're um, in the school where I teach the kids are taught English according to ability rather than according to um, according to age or class. And, and this is for a course of um, fairly advanced students, and they come from years eight to ten. They're mixed, um, and uh, what I did here um, was again looked very hard at using um, screen space. So at the top of the page, here is a banner, um, which is a little bit of um, bootstrap code, uh, which I put into the course using uh, Justin Hunt's uh, brilliant Generico filter. Um, the code for that is available, and I'm going to show you where you can get all these codes later. Um, I decided to have three or four images with a couple of uh, short slogans which created more the sort of the image of the course um, each course then has a forum for announcements um, in case i have a keywords or a glossary um, section um, again for schools there is an attendance part and then the forum and that's pretty much it everything else gets put down into a book um, For example, is the right is the Torchwood block, and um, Torchwood a British sci-fi uh, series which I use for them to listen to some real language. Um, um, Generico is a plugin. Um, it's used. Um, um, you can install it, and uh, uh, at that point, you're able to create your own little widgets, um, changes of format, and that type of thing. Um, I'll, there was some. If you, the best thing I would suggest is have a look at the the latter part of Justin Hunt's keynote speech, which is a, a couple of hours ago at iMoot, and uh, where he'll talk about that. Um, again, here. A short introduction um, using audio. Um, a very important thing, I think, is not in almost every case uh, now. This course is actually a couple of years old, but in every case now, I always add an audio file um, where any piece of text that is more than a, f a few lines, more than a couple of lines, um, I just read it out or I get a colleague to read it out, record it, and add it as an audio file. Um, simply this idea that two senses um, help you to learn more than one sense. Um, and I feel it's a very important thing. It's dead easy to do, um, and it's always there um, so that people can just listen to the file if they want, um, or they listen and read at the same time. Um, using the book, and then here, um, a rotating activity which is time-based. Um, that's done using um, uh, conditional uh, activities, um, which create at different times within the course, different activities here. And then we have really the supporting uh, uh, activities, which is a book. Um, using the Google book, uh, Google Books, the Moodle Books, um, for each uh, episode, um, and no, I put it here. All right, so we'll have a look. This one, and they were quite short, but some information, maybe a couple of screenshots from each course, uh, from each episode, and a key aspect: useful vocabulary. Putting that in, um, this wouldn't just apply to language teaching, it applies to a number of things. Um, but key phrases, um, key concepts, uh, at this case, in this case, I did it um, that I expected the students to look the words up first. 
Um, with lower level learners, I had it directly linked to a glossary so they could click on the words and look at them. Um, also, once the episode had been shown on TV, the glossary links appear here on these words, the, the words become linked um, and that allows them to build up their specialist voc vocabulary in the subject. Um, and very often the thing that will create the talking point of the episode, um, either some trivia or some background information. Um, here was a link to the, um, the video from the, uh, the song uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was the title of the episode, to discuss why the episode had got that name. Um, that was certainly, um, using the books for that, um, certainly solved of the uh, problems. Once the book activity had been done, um, they got a crossword which was generated from the same glossary which uh, was used to, for the vocabulary list and they got a crossword with definitions um, which allowed them to uh, practice the vocabulary. Um, one of the uh, key uh, learning skills that uh, we use in the, the courses is uh, Petra Kucha presentations uh, which is um, a Japanese style of presentation um, where it is um, controlled in as far as you have, uh, you're limited to 20 slides and each slide is 20 seconds per slide. Um, very useful for um, speaking skills and very useful for confidence skills and um, feeling of confidence among the learners. Um, and we since we've introduced that to the school um, in a number of subject areas, um, the quality of uh, speaking from the learners has improved enormously in many, many subjects. Um, and so most courses have this module um, in various degrees, which allows them to find out about Petra Kucha. Um, here is an element about copyright rules. Um, which I expect them to abide by, not just copying a photo out of um, uh, Google and a Google template um, for different, um, um, for them to begin practicing with. Um, one of the more important um, things which I think is important if you're considering uh, playing with your course and, and redesigning your course is to have um, a, a sand pit. Um, and I've set up a, a hidden course um, where I play with things and colleagues of mine play with things. And when we hear of a new idea, um, here was one um, class tools, which provided a spinning wheel to allow students to, uh, to pick names at random um, and it was embedded in an iframe. And at that time, I wasn't sure whether iframes worked on everything. So we tried it out here. Um, and so this course is how a course should look. It's simply you make a new module and play with it. And here, for example, I have um, generic uh, testing where um, here this clock, which is uh, uh, you can see on the left of the screen is a countdown timer to the next uh, test. Um, again, creating bulleted lists with uh, different bullets, um, labels, um, a news flash screen uh, was one of the first, I think it was the first um, you know, I created with Generico, um, which is used in forums. Um, I have kids who discuss issues, current affairs, and they create um, a screen, they create a, take a photo of something and add this classic sort of CNN style um, text overlay um, and create slogans and uh, headlines. Um, quite a nice way of uh, doing um, lighthearted current affairs um, and looking at, yeah, looking at a useful piece of grammar um, uh, the, the skill of writing titles. And here, 
yeah, some other things, buttons and things like that. Um, certainly a great idea for having, getting your own uh, test things up and running. The other thing which I think is particularly applicable to language teaching, and you can look at the time, yeah, we're doing okay. Um, particularly applicable to language teaching um, is a warehouse. Now, I know that there are some uh, plugins now that uh, co uh, create repositories for Moodle um, elements. At the moment, certainly the last time I seriously looked at them, which was about six months ago, um, I could see that they were going in the right direction, but not quite what I wanted. And so what I created was a, um, a course called The Warehouse, which is only available to teachers. And um, in language teaching, there are so many things that you need to recycle. Um, certainly when it comes to quick practice and things like that, um, irrespective of what the level is, at some point, someone's going to want to practice past simple irregular verbs to give the classic example. And so if those things are available in one place, you can go to that. And when you go to your the course where you want it, you can import it. You can just click on the elements in this section and they are then imported into your new course and recycled. Um, this gets by this reinventing the wheel problem or looking for where did I use that last time. Um, so now um, all of my teachers, when they create something, it's created in the warehouse and then it's taken into the course where they require it. And to be honest, there is not much original material. Um, once you've got the warehouse really well stocked, um, it mostly comes down to introductions and linking pieces um, that are unique to that course. An awful lot of the activities um, are recycled or are largely recycled um, from original material in the warehouse course. Um, what I want to do now is I forgot to open a tab with right uh, course on. So if you just bear with me for a moment, the screen will probably flash and judder a little bit for a while. Um, Right. Uh, here's a course which is um, created for senior managers. Um, and that course is uh, very much for people who do not have time to do anything, they claim, but really want to improve their English um, and uh, n almost never turn up to appointments because they suddenly have important meetings to um, attend to. Um, and it became more and more important to me um, uh, to get these people as customers or to keep them as customers was to provide them with what they, with what fitted in with their requirements, um, which was basically online teaching and um, that they could control the time when they uh, did their learning. And so now um, most of the courses which I offer to um, industry and to business uh, I would say in a sort of 80% online uh, part to 20% face-to-face teaching. Um, in many cases, I meet the managers or the businessmen once a month for two hours or maybe a little longer. And the rest of the time, I either meet them over Big Blue Button or Skype um, for very short meetings. And in those very short meetings, we discuss what they have done on the course online, um, which I can then manage much better. And here's an example of that. Again, very much like the other course, um, a short uh, a banner rotating with the key concepts, announcements of room. Um, and here, uh, these are uh, people who are really the big thinkers in managed philosophy. 
Um, so Frederick Taylor, who brought the stopwatch into industry, Henry Ford, Frank and Lillian Gilbraith, um, Taichi Ono, who created the Toyota production system, um, which is so important in industry, and Jack Welch from uh, General Electric. Um, and these people, um, what I did was to create a course which is, a, in, um, from the content point of view, is interesting and relevant to the learners, but allows them to choose which area they are interested in. So, for example, Frederick Taylor um, was very much a man that used uh, processes. He did process analysis. He was one of the first um, to really do that. And processes in language uh, or in English is all about present simple. It's things that are repeated. And so they're looking at using the present simple. Um, they may be describing trends, which is using the present continuous. Um, and so um, they can look at Frederick Taylor, they can learn things about Frederick Taylor, um, but the grammar underlining each of those people um, or the, those thinkers is that that's where the hard work comes. That's where they are going to improve their English. Um, and here, for example, um, something which is very common in uh, industry is the Gantt chart, who was Henry Gantt was an assistant of um, uh, Frederick Taylor. And so talking about Gantt charts is something that managers do all the time. And so here it's a case of giving them the practice in that language. They can choose that, they can look at the course overview and see these elements in each of the different thinkers um, and choose then what they want. Ultimately, the level, yeah, they're all in the sort of B2 to C1 area uh, in the European standards, um, but they can look at these things and um, take their own way through the course. Um, what that means for the teacher uh, is really a, a question of knowing the product, knowing what's available, in term, I'm talking now about Moodle, um, and being able to um, find the right tool. It's a bit like a Swiss army knife. Yeah? Um, Moodle has got all these options and it's rather difficult to cover all the bases. Um, it's usually possible, um, but the question is knowing how. Um, and even I, I've been looking at this problem almost exclusively. I've left almost everything else out of my development work at the moment and have been really concentrating on this for the past year. Um, and uh, even now, I see things in forums and think, yeah, that's really good, but oh, how am I going to do that? Um, and very often the answer is going to be just in Hunt's Generico filter. Um, and so what I actually did was, um, I looked at this uh, a little while ago, and I, I'm in the process of setting up a course, which is um, I've set up another domain under my main domain. Um, and in this domain, I'm just going to offer free courses for teachers. Um, and what they can do there is um, look at some of the th uh, the look at some of the um, ideas that I've had, and they can contribute their own ideas because the forum is absolutely central to that. Um, and they can um, learn from each other, or we can learn from each other, about uh, how to improve the the teaching of languages with Moodle. As I said, it's completely free. Um, there, there is no charge for this whatsoever, um, and I'm certainly going to invest a lot of time in this over the next uh, few months in setting it up that it becomes something useful as a useful resource for language teachers online. Um, you'll see here at the moment there's only three courses. Um, one, Zero Budget Technology, which was a, a presentation which I did at the BET show in the UK in January. Um, and their teachers look at ideas of using classroom technology that costs nothing or next to nothing. Um, but the one here, um, which we're, which I'm going to quickly introduce you to, is 
Just wait for that to load. Yeah. Um, yeah, teaching language with Moodle, exactly what I'm talking about today. Um, and for those of you who've been watching since the beginning, you'll see I've decided on my structure now that that is the way the courses are going to be. Because I think it's important that people who take more than one course can orientate themselves quickly and know what to expect. Um, here, there are going to be some things. Um, again, it's not a do as I do or a do as I say situation. It really is a here's what I have done. Done. And people are more than welcome to say, seriously, I don't think that works because of this. I know that, that there are people far cleverer than me when it comes to pedagogical uh, uh, views. It's, it's not a thing that I'm terribly strong on. I, to be honest, I've done most of this by um, the seat of my pants and experience, not by any kind of academic study. Um, but for example, Again, using space, uh, one of the things is to have the introduction to the course um, by clicking a button. So I just click the button and the introduction is there. Most people only need to see the introduction once. Yeah, again, there's the chance to listen to it if you wish. And then it's gone. It's out of the way. It's freeing up. It's up screen real estate um, for more important things. Um, and here is a unit on layout. Um, uh, certainly some of the things I've talked about today um, are here. One of this again, uh, the embedding of video um, is to use modals. Um, a, a form of pop-up which darkens the outer area of the screen and puts the video in the middle, puts its center of attention. Um, that allows focus for the students. Um, I find it a very useful thing to get everything else out of the way. Um, and these are all very simple things. They're all elements that come from um, Bootstrap, which is the basis of most of the uh, uh, Moodle uh, templates nowadays. Um, here we have a block video of the day. Yeah, every day the video changes, comes from a glossary list of um, mostly in this case fun videos about teaching English. Um, and the key element in each of these sections is going to be the forum uh, where people can discuss these elements. Um, to uh, give you a, I will go back to learning resources. Yeah. Um, to give you two final examples where I stop because otherwise we're going to start overrunning quite badly. Um, one of the really cool ways of using books in language teaching uh, is to cover the different levels of skill. Um, yes, Guido, I will certainly show you how to do that show video thing. Um, um, it, it's a Generico plugin now for me, but I will sh I will walk you through that afterwards by all means. Um, here, uh, one of the great things about the books that it allows is to have um, a thing called pills, again, which is a bootstrap element. Um, and pills are not the things that you take to improve your performance at certain times of the night. Um, here, I have an example from um, a website called breakingnewsenglish.com, run by Sean Banville, who produces so much information and so many exercises, it's truly embarrassing. His work rate is phenomenal. But here, um, there was this Zika virus, which was all in the news a, a few months ago. Um, and what you can do with that is you can have the level one text here. Um, you click on the next one. and you can see the text has become a little bit more complicated. Again, in level three, a more detailed text, and in level four, 
more detailed and more complex. Um, so you can cover a lot of material for different levels of learners. And again, the problem of online learning is very often you haven't got the really good impression of how good or bad someone is. Um, and if you're teaching in business English, um, you very often have courses where there is quite a large variety of uh, standards within the course. Um, you're teaching a department where you can have good to quite bad in one group. Um, and again, for the uh, teachers who are on this course, um, the code to create or a, a, a template to create this um, is then available. So, go back. The last thing I wanted to show you again. Um, um, a wonderful way of providing uh, learners with choice is to, um, Dave, will that fill up on a question in Moodle? Um, very good question. Um, I'm, it works in the forum, which is often difficult. Um, I'm not sure about questions. I believe so, but I would have to check that. Um, the last thing I would, uh, yes, Stefan, I'm going to wind up right now. Last point I'd like to make is um, using something like Symbaloo allows you to use uh, links, which uh, allows the student again to, here we've got a list of tools, but can allow different options for the student, rather like the grid um, for the content of the Moodle course, you can provide a grid with links to different subject material to provide a springboard for discussions. Again, takes up a lot of space on the screen, but can be hidden with a little click. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And so hopefully we'll be back to the main page. Yeah. OK, so um, I did go on a touch longer than I intended to. Sorry about that, folks. Um, if you've got questions, you can either ask me now, put them in the forum here afterwards. If you're interested in having a look at that course, which is being built up as we speak, it will be done over the next week or so, uh, will be completed. Um, just send me a message using the Moodle messaging system on this site with your name and email address, and I will send you back some details. You can't do automatic um, enrollment there. I have to send you a login and a password, and an initial password. So thanks very much for listening. Um, I hope it's been useful for you, and I'd be more than happy to carry on the discussion with you afterwards. Thank you so, so much, Andy. That's been truly enlightening. Um, the stuff you do shows that you don't only know how to teach languages and how to cater for uh, various language um, levels in a course, but that you also know your Moodle stuff and your technology really, really well. Um, lots and lots of pointers for me to go to and check out. Um, that was smashing, and I'm sure the others will agree. So uh, thank Thanks. you so much for that, Andy. The Oranges Cafe session will start in a couple of minutes. Gareth is already over there waiting for us, guys. Um, I will have to love and leave you. And I'll see you around. Take care. Bye now. Bye, Stefan. Thanks very much for helping. <laughs>